If you're looking for a video explaining the various format of metric segregation, then this episode is for you. Welcome back to the Is It Observable YouTube channel. Today's episode is part of the Open Telemetry series where we had lots of various episodes. After explaining how to create custom metrics with open telemetry, or even the power of the target allocator, I thought it could be very useful to take a few minutes to remind the importance of understanding the different format of metrics available in the market. This format of metric has been shared globally by the open telemetry community when building the metric SDK. If you followed, when building open telemetry metrics, we have the options to define the type of aggregation temporality. But what does it really mean? Today's episode will be focused on explaining the various metric type and how to convert them in our collectors. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So let's see what we're going to learn out of this episode. We'll start by explaining the various metric type, um, the type of processor we should use when we need to convert our metrics. And last, I will share a few best practice around metric conversions. Open telemetry metrics have the ability to define the temporality aggregation, delta, or cumulative. The first reaction when we discovered that is, but what is the difference and what should I use? So to be 100% clear, the open telemetry is a common standard and it has the requirements to generate telemetry data that will be ingested in any observability backend of the market. So when building the open telemetry metrics, they decided to support the two metric format of the market. So delta and Cumulative. To simplify this, cumulative is a Prometheus format and delta is StatsD. So before going into details of the difference between both format, what are the solutions supporting cumulative and what are the solutions supporting delta? Well, let's start with cumulative. Cumulative is going to be Prometheus, Thanos, Cortex, in fact, all the solution relying on Prometheus storage. Then you have the one supporting StatsD, which is Danatrace, Datadog, and you have solutions like Lightstep that support both formats. Depending on your observability backend, you need to know which metric format it supports, otherwise you won't be able to ingest your metrics. So what is the difference between the two formats? Well, let's start with the Prometheus, the cumulative format. Cumulative means that the value sent to the backend is the sum of all the values since the start of the measurements. It sounds a bit obscure. So let's take an example. Let's say we have an exporter producing gauge metrics. At time stamped zero, we're measuring five. So it will send T0, five. Then at time stamp one, we measure four. It will send by the exporter, so time stamp one, and the sum will be five plus four, so it's gonna be nine. Then in time stamp two, we measure 10, so we make the sum, so it will be 19. In the other hand, delta means that the value will always be the difference between the last measurement reported. So let's take the same example. At T0, we measure 5. So in delta, it will mean T0, 5. Then on the next timestamp where we measure 4, we make the difference. So it's going to be T1 minus 1 because we reduce with one matrix. Then we measure the last, time st last measurement is 10. So we make the difference between both of them. It's going to be timestamp 2 is equal to 6. So if you're sending cumulative to a delta backend, then it could be rejected or the value could be completely wrong from what we initially measured. Normally, most of the backends supporting open telemetry metrics are controlling the attributes of the metrics holding the type of temporary aggregation type that we have selected. If we see that the temporary aggregation is cumulative when we expect delta, then this metric should be rejected. This is the main reason why we need to rely on the collector to transform the metrics to the expected format of our backend. But keep in mind that few processors of the collector is by default producing delta metrics. So even if you're using Prometheus, you will need to consider converting those metrics into cumulative. For example, the connector count is producing delta metrics. 
count. In fact, he's counting the spans, the logs that is going through uh, that connector. Or there are also processors that only support as input cumulative metrics. So would you will also do the conversion before using those type of processors? For example, the interval processor will expect to have uh, cumulative metrics. If not, it will be it will be not even considered. To convert a metric to one format to the other, it's in fact very easy because the open telemetry community has provided two useful processors. We have the delta to weight that converts from delta to cumulative. And of course, we have the opposite, the cumulative to delta. The cumulative to delta does not require any specific settings, except if you're planning to utilize one of the, prop the properties like limit that will proceed to the conversion only on the metrics that we listed in the limit property. We have exclude, which is the opposite. The conversion will only apply uh, on all the metrics except the one that we've listed. Then we have initial value that will determine how the collector will behave uh, in case of a restart, because if we restart, uh, we lose the metrics. There are several modes. We have keep. Keep will take uh, the receive metrics, will save it, use it to make the next delta, and will send it to the backend. The other one, we have drop. It's the opposite, where we keep the metrics to calculate the delta, but this metric won't be sent to the backend. And we have automatic here. Automatic is the recommended one, I would say. So the metric in automatic, the metric we sent in various con specific conditions. So first you need to have a start time, knowing when that exporter has started. Then the second one, we make sure that the start time is after the component restart. And last, that the start time is different from the timestamp that we have in our metrics. Delta processor is a bit similar. It only have one property called the metrics property that will list all the metrics that will be considered to be converted. The delta to rate processor will only convert the sum metrics to a rate matrix. At the end, we will have a gauge matrix coming out of that conversion. Of course, the metric conversion will require to combine different type of plugins like uh, the routing connector and transform to decide when we have to convert and when we don't need to convert. Like explained in the episode related to the logs, highlighting the open telemetry transform language, so OTTL. The collector provides several plugins using OTTL, helping us to test, to modify our signals from metric spans to logs. In the case of converting metrics with the OTTL, uh, OTTL will be very useful to help us to convert only metrics that requ requires to be converted. So we'll use first a transform processor to set a resource attributes holding the metric format. So we will apply only uh, the transformation if this resource attribute is equal to cumulative or to delta. So here is an example. And you can see that here we're testing the aggregation uh, temporary uh, format. And if it's equal to uh, cumulative, then we set the cumulative uh, property to true. Once we have the resource attribute cumulative, then we can define the routing connector that can only test resource attributes. Remember, we mentioned that on the dedicated episode. For example, here it is. In this example, the transform processor needs to be executed before the routing connector to have the resource attributed cumulative defined. This resource attribute will help us to understand the type of metrics that we are dealing with. If the cumulative metric is true, then we will trigger the metric conversion pipeline that will have the cumulative delta processor. Otherwise, it will trigger a default pipeline uh, that will not convert anything. When converting metrics, we need to define the right collector pipelines to avoid any, issue, any issues during the conversions. We need to make sure that all the data produced will be sent to the same collector. So we need to avoid converting our metrics in a daemon set or a deployment collector. We are rather going to use a stateful set uh, deployment, for example. Or you can even be creative by having a dedicated collector that will be at the very last mile before sending the data to your backend. And this final collector will design to shape your telemetry data for your desired auxiliary backend. And here we'll apply the right conversion. There are plenty of options possible, so just be creative. So the question is, why do we want to send the data to the same collector? Well, it is very simple. The cumulative processor is storing the previous value with its timestamps. So if you're not 
hitting the same collector, then the results of the conversion will be completely wrong. To illustrate this example, let's take a, a very simple example. So let's say we have two replica of collector deployed as a deployment, um, and we are using the same Prometheus export that we had. So at the beginning, uh, we have T0 that measure five, then T1 that measure four, T2 that measure 10, and T3 that measure six, for example. Normally, our backend, if we had received and converted properly in Delta, we will have T0, five, T1, minus one, T2, six, and T3, T3 minus four. So at T0, let's, we have five. It will end up, let's say, on the collector one. And because it's the first value, uh, then it will be sent directly to the backend. So uh, we will send T05. Then the second value, four, let's say we send it to the second collector. So here, this collector never received any metrics, so that will be the initial value we consider. So it will send T14 to the backend. And then at T2, we measure 10. And let's say that now we are sending that metrics to the collector number one that tries to convert the metric with the previous value that we set, which is five. So it will send the difference between five and 10, which is five, so T2, five. And then let's say that for the T3, we have the value six, and here we are heading to the collector number two, and the conversion will be done uh, using the, uh, the value stored on that collector, which is four, so it will report T3, two. We can see that that metrics ingested is very, very far from the real value that we measure. So if you have any conversion to do, make sure to design the right collector pipelines and architecture, avoiding collecting your metrics in a daemon set deployments, but more into a stateful set deployment. This is very important, make sure, because just by your minor mistake, you will look at metrics that are completely wrong. You're probably going to send SLO based on those values, you will probably base alerts on those values and those values will be always wrong. So don't underestimate the importance and try to implement the right architecture to have the right conversion. That's it for today's episode related to the metric format. So as you see, there is the cumulative uh, metric in one end and the delta on the other end. So very quick uh, reminding. So first, make sure to know which type of metric format your backend uh, is uh, supporting. So then uh, you will figure out what type of conversion you need to apply uh, in your collectors. Uh, having the right pipeline utilizing uh, cumulative delta or delta to rate is fairly easy. Uh, utilizing transform and routing will make your life easier. So you have a common pipeline for all your metrics that will be very fantastic. Using the target allocator will be, make your life even more easier. We mentioned that on the previous episode, but again, very important, make sure to use stateful sets uh, deployments uh, to make sure that one metric is always going to the same uh, collector and that the conversion will be done properly. So I checked on the target allocator uh, the other day and yes, the target allocator it will pick, for example, one metric from one pod and will, this pod will always go to the same uh, collector so there is no impact in the conversion. So again, don't underestimate the conversion because otherwise you will have lots of metrics that doesn't make sense. Uh, it's a very simple tasks, so don't underestimate that. Consider it when you're building your collector architectures. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So see you soon for another episode.